I hope that you had a nice Mayufka, but you have also time to read the uh, uh, reading for this class, namely one article, just uh, a short essay of seven pages by uh, a hero of our meeting today, uh, Walter Ong, entitled Where We Are Now. And uh, I'm afraid that few of you could uh, go through the book, which I also sent on our platform, namely the orality and literacy, the technologizing of the word. Uh, which he published uh, in 181982. Uh, 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 but perhaps uh, before um, I will enter into uh, Walter Ong's thought, I will just summarize uh, our course because this is my last uh, film which I uh, prepared for you. As you know, uh, next week, 13 of May, we will start your presentation. And uh, it means that we will start um, exactly quarter past one. And uh, I will not uh, give you a time to watch this, uh, my films uh, in, in during the class, uh, but uh, we will have a occasion to listen and to watch your presentations. And please remember uh, what is important uh, is to um, initiate a debate in class. So the very important part of your presentations are questions which you direct to the audience, means to all of us. So 20 minutes more or less for presentation or perhaps better, 15 minutes for presentations and five minutes for questions and debates. Since uh, you decided to make presentations, many of you in any way, in groups, so perhaps uh, we will have uh, a little bit different dynamic of the presentations, a uh, few uh, after two, three or four presentations at the end we will have a discussion so in any way uh, one hour and a half is enough to have really a good three presentations with a very dynamic uh, uh, discussion and uh, those of you who decided to write uh, final essays uh, so please attend also this class because this uh, is also a learning process for all of us. You probably are used already to make presentations, to use uh, different uh, programs which facilitate the presentations, not only just uh, telling as I am doing in a very old fashioned way, uh, but you probably will use also, I am I'm not so familiar with this in programs like PowerPoint and different stuff. So in any way, it will all will be um, uh, elements of my, my evaluation of your presentations. And now back to our last uh, uh, meeting uh, to which uh, the departure point is my presentation. Why I decided to encourage you to read Walter Ong? Uh, well, the, the most obvious reason is that uh, he is an American philosopher, theologian, uh, very influential in, in different uh, fields. Uh, he influenced particularly uh, media. Uh, media, theology, philosophy, uh, anthropology, sociology. He was really present in, in, in different dimensions. And this is one of the reasons why it's good to be familiar with, with uh, his existence. Uh, he wrote several books in form of uh, previously delivered lectures. 
and uh, I will focus only on his uh, two works, one uh, most uh, well-known, Morality and Literacy, translated in many languages, Polish included, and I think that it's uh, worth it to, to, to be aware that uh, we have a compact reflection on how um, in the history of humankind, the way how we communicate with one another, if it is like now, uh, image uh, through mediated uh, uh, through computer to Zoom, but also letters, we can write on chat, we can send uh, email to one another, we can send a letter, we can publish a book or an article. Uh, in previous time, uh, we were, uh, our forefathers were writing uh, just uh, using uh, a piece of paper and pen and it was also a way to communicate before printing. And it means that the, the, the audience uh, which was uh, re uh, taking part in this communication was very limited. So all this uh, as the subtitle of, um, of the book by um, Ong is uh, telling is uh, the technologizing of the word means how a word which we are pronouncing, which we are using, is, um, is changing its uh, dynamic uh, which is linked to technology. We rarely we think about, but it's really something different when we are using a computer to, to send just a, a, a a, a short message or when we write a, a letter or revolution which happened in Europe in 16th century when suddenly thanks to Gutenberg uh, we moved from handwriting to print and instead of one uh, receiver we have thousands of people who were able to read the same text and how this fact uh, changed dramatically also a communication of the new ideas like uh, reformation there are scholars who are claiming that without uh, Gutenberg uh, innovation uh, reformation will be not so successful and the same today, think only how deeply social media influenced our way of communicating. If someone is cut off from uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, it seems that he or she is cut from, from the world. It doesn't exist if she or he is not communicating through this new media. And uh, this had also uh, an impact on, for example, the presidency of uh, Ronald Trump. As you know, he will be uh, remembered as a Twitter president and how, how deeply this uh, frequent use, uh, using of, of uh, Twitter uh, uh, influenced uh, the reception of his um, presidency. So uh, it's just uh, to, to, to mention few elements of how, how important this book of uh, Walter Ong uh, was for many uh, people who, for whom it was like open eyes experience. Yes, this is true, it's radically different uh, dependently from how we, we use and how we communicate to one another. Uh, very important for um, Ong was also uh, the fact that uh, humanity started to, to write. So in, so in in the very title you have orality and literacy. So the fact that uh, in in Greece probably or in Asia it was a different period, but fifth uh, century of uh, before our common era when when uh, Greeks started to to read. To, to, to write, uh, this influence also a way to communicate. It was differently when only they communicated via 
words, oral transmission. So Homer probably was uh, communicating his uh, poetry only via uh, oral communication. But with Plato, it was already a written text. So writing means that uh, readers uh, have text and don't have a, a, a living human being in front of us. And those of you who attended my class in philosophy you remember how how skeptical Plato was uh, toward writing, uh, although he wrote so many dialogues. But exactly because uh, written text is unchangeable, so you cannot modify your thoughts. Uh, and you are not sure if those who read you understood in this spirit uh, in which you wrote this text. And uh, this is also a, an interesting uh, literary example how uh, in uh, Bulhakov, uh, uh, Master and Marguerite, uh, where Joshua, Jesus, is not sure if Matthew uh, wrote correctly what he really uh, said. So it's the problem of faithfulness or of falsification of written word. You see, all this is very important and connected also with our topic of um, liberation theology, because sometimes we are like captivated by uh, some of you use this word uh, stereotypes instead of uh, communicating with living person we are communicating with dead letters and this is the uh, very important uh, uh, aspect of uh, our uh, human communication and uh, please read carefully this short essay but really a programmatic essay it's the last last piece uh, which um, Ong uh, published in 2000. He was already old man. In fact, he is, his span of his life is 1912, 2003. So three years before his death, he, he wrote this short essay, Where We Are Now. And I think that this short essay is very, uh, strongly connected with liberation theology, with, with, with our um, topic. And perhaps I will read you just uh, uh, one passage, uh, the last uh, paragraph of, of this essay, and you will realize how, uh, how important uh, his thought is, a kind of summary of our uh, discussion in class. So this is, uh, I'm quoting uh, Ong. To address the alienation arising from globalization by attending to a context closer to us, our own time has seen the rise of contextual theologies, such as and listen, liberation theology, so our theology, feminist theology, we spoke also about, ecological theologies. We, mention it in connection with Pope Francis, human rights theologies, and various others. These are well known in intellectual circles, Christian and other, and they themselves have by now mostly been, been globalized in this, the sense that despite their own specialization, they in one way or another affect affect more or less all milieus in all cultures. Liberation theology, for example, originating in Latin America, has become an urgent line of thought in highly industrialized cultures where the drive to maximize profit has led to explanation of child and other below minimum wage labor, often from foreign non-industrialized cultures where wages can be desperately low so that products solid in the highly industrialized cultures are often in fact basically the products of foreign manufacturing that exploits virtually slave labor so you see uh, this uh, 
highly theoretical uh, reflection are really touching a core of our uh, interest, uh, namely liberation theology. So please uh, read carefully uh, uh, Walter Ong's uh, last uh, essay, and I uh, really hope and I'm even sure that we will have a good discussion how important the knowledge which we have about our own way of using words could affect in the positive way our understanding of the global words. And this is the real uh, liberating experience which uh, we are invited to make in order to make also our word a better word.